streets closed, but what if there's like an emergency? Somebody has a heart attack. Are they supposed to walk to the hospital or meet the ambulance down on another street? And they said no, they'll, they would allow this gentleman, Kelly, she said no, this happens for it, said they, uh, uh, emergency vehicles can, can drive the police and do them when the street has been shut. So, uh, you know, anyway, my complaint's not about it being closed or name games, it's not that big of a deal, it just seems like the communication is too big, et cetera. I'd be happy to open my own meetings anymore, uh, and obviously this is done, I think I saw Trevor taking some pretty good notes there. outside the jurisdiction, if that's the right word for the council, to address this. But nonetheless, once it became addressed and the resolution came forward, he voted for it. And I guess uh, just during the oath of office uh, today, it's pretty clear that the oath of office means you support the Constitution and the federal laws. I obviously feel the people that voted for it did that. The people that voted against it did not. Mm. The one thing I read in the post uh, record was uh, some comment about rage, so I thought I'd better look it up to make sure I was right. And uh, the definition was one of political belief that gains enthusiasm and is supported. I don't think there's two things that we could support better than our national laws and the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Hi, I'm John Simbalar. This is at 3912 R Street. I just have a quick comment from a commercial vehicle standpoint on roundabouts on Highway 14. Um, I'm a retired teamster and I probably put in 3.5 documented. 3.5 million documented miles on the states of you know, Washington, Oregon, and California. Roundabouts for commercial vehicles on a highway as narrow as Highway 14 is a very, very poor idea. From a safety standpoint, from uh, a time standpoint, we've all seen Highway 14 during rush hour. It's backed up all the way from Kansas to Washougal. If you have a roundabout and you have a truck, that truck cannot go through that roundabout in one lane. It can't happen. I don't care if you have two traders or one trader takes up two lanes, which means he has to wait for everybody else, and everybody behind him has to wait. You have it not only at 15th Street, you have it at 32nd Street. So if you want to make the city look like Seattle at a rush hour, I have it because that's what it's going to do. Plus, the safety factor is not good. Somebody's going to get impatient. Somebody is going to jump the gun, go around the truck, do something else in the lane, and hurt somebody. saying it, but I've gone through roundabouts in Lacey, in Seattle, in Olympia, and I've seen some pretty bad accidents. I've seen one fatality accident with a nine-year-old kid, and it's something I don't think anybody should have to see. So use that in consideration for making the road. That's all. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public? We're 
you're still in public comment. <coughs> Um, I'm Marilyn Terrell. I live at 950G Street. I first of all want to compliment you. Every time I come in, this place looks better. Well, thank you. Uh, and uh, it is very nice that you are, are uh, coming with us in Sportsburg. But the Colombian did credit you for, for doing the choosing. So uh, compliments to the mayor. <laughs> thank you. Um, some time ago, I came to you and talked about uh, trees, and um, I don't think I received a satisfactory answer because, uh, but I don't remember that. But I did want to tell you that at the time that I came, there was a gentleman bought a property on J Street. Uh, he removed a big, big tree that I would say was four of these with my arms aren't very long, but four of these, <coughs> he decimated, knocked down, obliterated this wonderful old tree, did some various things to this house, and put it up for sale. <coughs> Why he had to get rid of the tree to sell a house, I don't know, but if you had some sort of decent law here, he wouldn't have been able to do that. It was a very special tree. It wasn't just, you know, your average uh, two-inch caliper or something or other. It should have been protected somehow. Somebody planted that tree a long time ago. He didn't plant it. He didn't give a damn about it, and he got rid of it. That's the end of that comment. The next thing is, despite what this gentleman says, I am embarrassed, mortified, appalled, and I can't tell you what else. At your, at your vote on the immigration uh, business. I don't think it's a Christian thing to do. I think it's mean-spirited. I don't think it has a damn thing to do with Washougal. Our governor would tell you that these people perform a very important, desirable activity in this agricultural state. And to tell these people that they have, have to I don't know what to say. I, I just think that I expected better of you. And the next time I see Washougal on the paper, I would like it to be more commendation about how well you do instead of what nasty, mean people you can be. Thank you, Mrs. Terrell. Any other comments from the public? Okay, hearing none. Yes, Dave. I'm not sure we... <coughs> How appropriately to put this, but uh, given the fact that we're going to vote on this TIP tonight, we're not? You've oh, got a public hearing. hearing on it, but you're not going to vote on it it's tonight. Another, no, okay, so another there, public hearing Mr. Olson has another chance at uh, his comments. He gets another three minutes. <laughs> Given the fact that it's a public hearing, would it be appropriate, uh, and it's a difficult subject, would it be appropriate 